So look at number uh, 99 here. Find the center and then the radius of the circle that passes through these three points. All right, okay. Then what we'd like to do is maybe we can have the... Uh, we can try to sketch it first and then see what we can do with it. Negative uh, 2, comma 7. 2, 4, 6, 7 over here. And then 0, comma 1 right over here. And 2, comma negative 1 right over there. Now, you can see that this is very slim uh, triangle here. Oh, I mean, there are several ways for us to do it. One method that I'm going to try to do is, what if you're to assume that there is some sort of a, a center? I don't know, I'm just going to pick this point. What if that were to be the center, and then drawing the circle in that way? Then, one thing that which we get to realize is, from here, if I to measure the distance from here to here, has the same distance from here, and from here too. Because they are all radii. All right, then knowing that, what can we do? Let us try to use the distance formula. From, from the first one, using the distance formula, it says x plus 2 squared plus y minus 7 squared must be equal to square root of x squared, x minus 0 squared, plus y minus 1 squared must be equal to the last one. Here we have x minus 2 squared and then plus y plus 1 square. Now, uh, alright, so then in this case, then what we like to do is, okay, what if you have to square all three sides, then what's going to be happening? And this time I'm going to expand, not only squaring them, but I'm, I'm going to exp expand each parentheses. Here the first one it becomes x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus y squared minus 14y plus 49 which is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 2y plus 1 and then the last portion becomes uh, x squared minus 4x plus 4 Maybe I'll just move this one over here a bit closer. And plus y squared plus 2y plus 1. Now, one thing that which we get to notice here is that x squared is common in all three. So is y squared. Then we can combine things together a bit closer. <coughs> so here we have 4x minus 14y and then here becomes plus 53 is equal to here in the middle one is negative 2y plus 1 the last one becomes minus 4x plus 2y plus 5 they're all equal to each other so what we can do is we can set up the first two parts to be equal to each other have an equation which will be 4x and adding to x of minus 12y and plus 52 is equal to 0. Now, second part is what if I were to have these two equal to 0 in this way and moving everything onto the other side then we get 4x and then minus 4y and minus 4 is equal to 0. So obviously, in order for us to cancel the, out the x's, we can subtract them. Then what we end up getting here is the 8y, or negative 8y, for that matter, uh, is e uh, plus 50, 60 is equal to 0. And here you can see that y must be equal to 7. All right, if y is equal to 7, then what is, uh, what is x? So I can put 7. Uh, well, this can be simplified into x minus y minus 1 equal to 0 and when x equals and when y equals 7 then x must be equal to 8 so in fact 8 comma 7 becomes our center so in fact I was a little bit off 8 comma 7 would have been right over here the point would have been right over here 
All right, then these three distances have to be equal to each other. But what is that, uh, then in this case, what is the radius? Oh, wait a minute. I see a horizontal line here. That means when I count them, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, radius is 10. You can see that right away. So, here we have um, center is at a comma 7 and then the radius is equal to 10 because we are able to count the boxes. Alright, number 100. Suppose that this is a line intersect with circle here given at point P and Q. Find the length of the curve PQ. Now, uh, so what if I have to sketch this one just one more time uh, using A All right. So here, uh, let's try to look at this one first. So if you were to add four and add nine, then we'll have a perfect square on each one of them. So here we get x minus 2 squared plus here y minus 3 squared is equal to 25 that means our center of the circle must be 2 comma 3 and radius must be 5 so 3 4 5 about there now suppose that this line intersects on circle at point P and Q. So uh, I don't know what this one is, but why don't we try to uh, figure out the approximation of the y-intercept and then I uh, sketch the line. Here, this uh, if I have to rewrite this one is y is equal to um, x over seven, and then plus uh, forty-four over seven. So what is forty-four over seven? Uh, it's a bit more than six. So here we have two, four. 6, I mean more than 6, right over there. And we're going to have a line passing through. So, and then uh, x intercept must be equal to 44, which is, I mean, negative 44, which would be way down there. So, I'm going to assume that our line segment uh, has a something like that. That's what's going to be happening. And uh, also, our center here was once again 2, 3. This is our center. And what we're looking for is this line sigma. What's the uh, length of this chord? PQ. So this is P, this is Q. Now, what we one thing that which we get to realize is the radius is 5. So here we get uh, that's 5. But wait a minute. Can I figure this one out? Because if I can find a perpendicular uh, line segment, Then, uh, since I know this one is 5, and this will be the half of the whole thing. So, only thing that I need is to find, I need to find the distance between this point and the line. You see, the distance between a point and a line is equal to absolute value of A, X sub 1 plus B, Y sub 1 plus C, all over square root of A squared plus B square. Now, uh, x1 and y1 is the point, and a, b, c is the uh, original equation written in standard form, such as this one. So the point at which we are looking at is 2, comma, 3. So if I have to plug in 2, comma, 3, distance becomes 2 uh, minus 7 times 3 plus 44. All over square root of, here is 1 square, plus negative 7 square. The denominator becomes uh, 50, and then the numerator uh, becomes 25. All right, then let's try to simplify this one. Uh, then it's going to be 5 over square root of 2. All right. 
or in other words, this is 5 radical 2 over 2. Either way, it's perfectly fine. Now, but if I were to use the Pythagorean theorem, you will realize that this length will also be 5 over radical 2. Now, then what is our, our entire line segment? Because it has been double of this one. So PQ is in fact 10 square root of or 10 over square root of 2. That becomes our final answer. Number uh, 101. The uh, point 1, comma 2 is the midpoint of the chord uh, of the circle here. Find the length of the chord. So here once again, uh, if I had to put a grid here, now here what am I going to do? I'm going to add 4 and add 1. That means here we have x minus 2 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to 20. Now, then uh, our center is at uh, 2 comma negative 1 and then the radius is a bit more than 4 so 1, 2, 3, 4 around there. Now, uh, there's a point 1 comma negative 2. So therefore, our slope has to be somewhat this way. Or I, our chord has to be perpendicular to this one, so we get that's basically what we end up getting. Then, uh, midpoint of the chord in fact uh, that is the closest point to the uh, center and you know that this distance because each one is one box one, uh, one by one box what we end up getting is this distance is equal to radical 2 and then uh, this portion from here to here is the uh, radius which will get us square root of 20 then what we are looking for is square root of 18 by Pythagorean theorem but since uh, square root of 18 is 3 square root of 2 we have two of those so therefore our uh, length of the chord chord is double that which is 6 radical 2 and that becomes our answer All right. Let's look at number one or two. Suppose that uh, p naught and then uh, I mean x naught and y naught uh, lies on the circle. That means these two values uh, can be plugged in here, and then the result will be a squared. Show that the equation of the line tangent uh, to the circle at this point is this one. So, uh, what does that mean? It means it has to satisfy uh, in the uh, <coughs> Uh, we have to look at two things. First thing is the line and the circle shares a point. Point and the point is x naught, y naught. Now, second thing is uh, in order for line to be tangent, slope of the line, tangent line has to be perpendicular, meaning negative reciprocal to uh, the slope of the radius so to do the first one uh, since this is a part of the line at then we get to realize that x naught squared plus 
y naught squared is equal to a squared. But since this one is tangent, uh, this one is also part of the part of the line, then we get x naught, x naught, plus y naught, and y naught will be equal to a squared. So we, we realize that these are identical. So therefore, uh, we just established the x naught and y naught is the common point to both of them. All right, second one. Then we need to find the slope. What is the slope uh, between this point, particular point, and the origin? Slope uh, of the radius becomes what's the change of y? Change of y is equal to x or y naught, and change of x is x naught. So we get y naught over x naught. Then slope of the line. Tangent line is uh, negative reciprocal, so negative x squared or x naught over y naught. So therefore, uh, we we realize that uh, this has to be the slope of the line. Let's see if that's the true uh, true case or not. Here, if I were to move this one over to the other side, it becomes y naught. Y is equal to negative x naught. Um, times x and plus a squared. Now, if I divide by, why not? And and we realize that this one matches with the uh, slope of the tangent line segment. So therefore, both of them have been satisfied, and that becomes our answer. Alright, so I'll stop here for, for a second and then I'll see you later. Bye-bye.